What up, party people? Today, we are doing another uh, consoleizer-ish mod, uh, and I'm doing it in the Switch style, the, the Sword and Shield Special Edition, but the Game Boy Advance shell, and because it's got a dock in the Switch. Anyways, you guys get the idea. We don't actually need this dock at all right now because there's nothing we need to do to this. Eventually, this Game Boy will turn into this Game Boy, which will be able to go onto that dock. I didn't grab my files, but we'll get to that later. I'm going to go ahead, put all this stuff off to the side, tear this apart, get out my tri-wing screwdriver, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six tri-wing screws here. Now we can swap over to a Phillips head, a Phillips one, and get this screw out, which is in the battery compartment. And we can lift off the back just like that and put it off to the side. Here we've got three Phillips screws. You might only have two. One of these are probably gonna be missing in yours. That's all right. We can go ahead and take those out. And there are two pieces here that we need to lift up and that will free the ribbon cable just like that. And we can grab it by the cart slot, wiggle and lift, and that ribbon cable is just gonna come right out. If it doesn't, you didn't lift those up far enough. So that's all right. I'm gonna put all this off to the side because I'm not reusing my shell. We're gonna to have to do trimming regardless. So if you wanna use an original shell, you're welcome to. The screen I believe is the drop-in V5 screen. So yeah, you can pretty much use any shell with this, I believe. And from here, as I usually recommend, clean up your board. I've already done this. I use isopropyl alcohol 99%. You can use 70 or 91%, whatever. I wouldn't use anything below 70 if that's even a thing. At the very least, just make sure your motherboard is dry before you put it back together. And if you're using 70% or more, by the time we're done with this mod, it should be dry. So you can either use a spray bottle like this and soak it. You can put some on a paper towel and rub it down, dip a toothbrush in it, whatever you can do. Clean up the dirt on both sides of the board, maybe a little bit in the cart slot. And I always highly recommend, since we're going to be soldering anyways, to open up your power switch and clean that up because it's probably nasty. But I've already done all of that, so we're just going to move on ahead and get out everything that's in a little baggie. <laughs> we can open up our mod kit. It should look something like this when you get it. There is a lot that we're going to have to do to this mod, so... There's a lot of soldering. Soldering is not an optional thing here. And it looks like they do connect the screen to the motherboard from the factory, but that's not good. We're gonna have to lift that up and we're just gonna take that out for now because I think it's gonna be a little bit harder to, uh, to mess around with this board with the screen still connected. So here is the board. This is the most important piece and we've got all of our other million pieces to go with this. I'm just gonna put pretty much everything off to the side for now. I'm gonna get out my new shell and put the back half off to the side for now. So here I'm just going to rest this in real quick just to see what we're working with. And I feel like there's gonna be a little bit more trimming involved than they show on screen. This is a big PCB. Okay, today I'm actually using a shell that's meant for a V2 kit. So I'm actually going to snip these off with the flush cutters because I don't know if this will interfere with the guides that are given to us and do the same thing, the ones over here. But also this little piece right here, we're going to need to trim. So I'm just going to do a little snip with my flush cutters just like that. And I'm trying to fit my motherboard in here, but I have some jagged lines from where they break the PCBs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth those out real quick. You may or may not have to do this. I'm just gonna be very careful to only get those jagged pieces. I've got a file here. And then now I should be able to line this up a little bit better. There we go. And we're gonna wanna line this PCB up with the screw hole here. This cutout is for that screw hole. And once we get it nice and center, I'm gonna take a Sharpie here. I'm gonna hold this PCB real still. And I'm just going to mark along that USB-C cutout. And I'm going to sand this to about halfway down the shell. I don't know how good this is going to work. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Could be better, but I don't really care. Holy crap. You need to have this cut down significantly further than I thought to get this fit in. I'm having fun whittling it down with it. 
fully assembled. So I think this might be the most amount of effort I've ever put into a Game Boy Advance. And I've put together plenty of funny playing GBAs. So <laughs> for some reason on my shell, I've got like a line of plastic here. I'm going to go ahead and flush cut that down. I ended up shaving down quite a bit over here and I could still do more, but I'm kind of tired and I think this is good enough. There's quite a bit of sanding down there. I don't really know how to quantify it, but I think you'll know when you put the two halves together, it'll look something like this. And if you can easily squish it down to where it's more flush or at least somewhat flush, then you're probably good. I think once we screw this all down, it'll be fine. There won't be too much pressure over here. Initially, I was thinking that I didn't dig deep enough on this half of the shell. You do not need to go any further than the top of the USB-C port going at the same level as the top of the shell, if that makes any sense. This line should be flush, is what I'm trying to say, because the plastic on the inside and then this thing here, that's all preventing this motherboard from going down any further. So I guess technically you could just smash it down, screw it down, and it would be fine. But there's going to be a lot of pressure building up around that USB-C port. I don't know if it's going to affect it long term. Either way, I'm happy that I sanded this down at least a little bit. Now that we've got all of that done and cleaned up, we can get back our shell. Once again, make sure that you have the USB-C hole cut, this piece cut, and anything else that's along this edge here, if you are using an original shell, there are these bumps that go along here and here. You might need to smooth that out. I don't think you really need to, but with the extra thickness of this board, it might be necessary. Since we're already filing things down, you might want to just flush cut those away or file them down. From here, we can take our screen and our insulating film. If you can't figure out which one that is, you shouldn't be doing this mod. We can peel that off and stick that down on the back of the screen here. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I want it to be perfect. That's as good as it's going to get because I don't think it's perfectly cut for this and that annoys me. But oh well. Somewhere around here, there is a blue and white double-sided piece of tape. We are going to peel the white side. And with the thinnest part on top, we're going to flip it over so the blue side is facing up. And we're just going to place this down over the plastic. I did not do the best job of that. But this is also a shell for a V2 screen. So I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. And then we can go ahead and peel the blue part that is remaining. Maybe. There we go. Then we're going to place our shell like this. You can also apply some double-sided tape down here underneath where we just put everything down. I think all this is is to hold this bracket in. So. Might as well peel that down, peel that down, put that down and peel that off. And you don't need to peel the uh, paper that's on these acrylic pieces. It's not going to be visible. We're going to put this one all the way up against this wall here. Doesn't really matter where you place it. Just make sure it's flush along that border wall there. And then we can take our other one also with the brown facing up and stick it all the way up against that left side wall there. Before we put the screen down, I'm actually going to flip this over and we're going to put our screen lens on. So I'd like to peel the outer edge, keep my fingers along the edges of the glass, and then we can peel just the sticky part off. And then I like to pinch with my fingers, whoa, like that, but have a better grip on the glass. And then we can press that down into our shell just like that. Then we can flip it over and we are going to quickly orient it like this. So the ribbon cable folds over like that and quickly peel the peel on the front and stick it down up against this left piece and this bottom piece here. No matter what shell you use, you want it up against those guides as close and as even as you can. Since I'm using a V2 shell, I'm going to say this over and over again. There's going to be a gap for me over here and on top. But if you're using an original style shell or an actual OEM shell, there should be zero gaps anywhere. And looking through, I think I'm going to have a little bit of tape showing up at the bottom. So now from here, we can put all of our buttons in, I guess. I don't like to put the side pieces in until like the very end. So I'm going to put those off to the side. Same thing with L and R. 
Just put those off to the side for now. But I am going to stick these metal pieces into L and R before I forget. And we can put our D-pad in over there. Put the D-pad membrane on top of it. We can put our start and select membrane in. I also like to put the power switch off to the side. And then we can put A on the outside and B on the inside. And then put the membrane over the top of those. And since I always forget it, let's go ahead and take our screws out. Because that's probably where your light pipe is hiding. You can stick that in its hole over here on the left above the B button. And then I'll put the screws over off to the side because we don't need those quite yet. Now we can take our motherboard and we can place it in like so. And it should all line up with the, the hole we made for the USB-C cutout. That kind of snapped into place for me. That's awesome. I'm gonna move that touchpad out of the way. Now I'm gonna take this and lift it up. It's gonna open up like a book. Then we can put our ribbon cable in for our screen, push it in as far as it'll go. And then when we flip the connector back down, it should line up with that white line that is on our ribbon cable. For me, it's bending a little bit. That's fine. It's okay. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. And then we can grab our motherboard. And on the back side above the cartridge slot, there's a little number right here underneath the screen connector. It'll either say 40 or 32. And we have two ribbon cables right here. The one with less pins will be for the 32 pin connectors. And the one with more is going to be for the 40 pin connectors. No matter which one you're going to use, we can take the smaller end and put it in to this connector here with the pins facing down. I'm using a 40 pin, so we're going to use this one. We can lift the connector up and we can slide our ribbon cable in as far as we can. Make sure it's nice and even. And then we can close that connector. And then we're kind of done with that for now. I'm going to put this whole thing off to the side. And we can flip our motherboard back over like this. And we can get out these ribbon cables here. We are going to solder these down to a bunch of the test pads on the board. We're going to put these ribbon cables down something like this. Now, it looks like there's some tape on the back. We can adhere this down. But that's going to be kind of hard to do because it's kind of hard to line up all of these. If you have some capped on tape or some not super sticky tape, I recommend using that to hold them down for a bit, but I'm just going to tack these down with solder. And once all those points are soldered down, we don't really need any tape to hold it down anyways. And this is where I highly recommend using some flux. Just looking at how these ribbon cables line up with the board, we can see what pads we're going to solder to. So I'm going to remove this for now, and I'm going to put some flux down on these three pads and these two pads. And with my soldering iron on to about 300 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to put solder on these three pads and these two pads here. Then I'm going to get this back out. We're going to line these up with those places we just put solder on. And you should be able to see the solder peek through all of those holes. And when you do, it's going to be lined up so we can just tack this down here with a little bit of solder. And now our ribbon cable isn't really moving in that spot. but it might wiggle a little bit up in this area. So there's still a bit of solder on my iron. So I'm just gonna hold it down in its spot with my tweezers and tack it down right there. And then it's no longer moving over there. So we can fill out the rest of those spots with some solder. And flux will make that very, very easy. And then guess what? We're gonna do it to the other side, but this side has a lot more solder points, so it's going to be a little bit trickier. So I'm going to take the ribbon cable and find all of the places we need to. And I'm probably going to take it off and put it back on a couple of times just to make sure I'm putting solder on the right points. Starting over here with TP5. TP5 and TP9 are going to need some solder. So we'll put a little bit of flux there, a little bit of flux there, and tap some solder down. Cool. Then we're going to hit the spot that's right above reset. I believe that's actually TP6 and then TP4 right next to it. And in this area, there are a lot of vias. Try not to solder to any of the vias that you don't need to solder to because you don't want to accidentally bridge anything when we solder down that ribbon cable. It's a little tricky. I know I even got a little bit of solder on the via right next to it, but I'm going to be very careful to not bridge those two connections. 
And I'm going to put this back down, line everything up. We can see TP7. I'm going to assume that's TP2 there. And whatever that one is over there, which is TP3. So TP3, TP7, and TP2. We can put some solder down on those. Okay. And that should be it. So once again, we're going to line up all those points so we can see solder shining through the holes. And it looks good. So I'm going to hold this down over here and solder down that the farthest point over here. And I'm going to hold the ribbon cable over here by TP2. And that didn't solder down too well. So I'm going to put some flux over top of it. You can never use too much flux as long as it's no clean flux. I'm going to add a little bit of solder to my tip, make sure it's all lined up, touch it down, and now it's locked down. I'm going to do the same thing for TP7. It's locked down. And then for the rest of these points, just to make sure, I'm going to put more flux on top of it. Again, you can never have too much flux in my humble opinion. And then just solder all of those points down and everything looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna put my soldering iron down for a bit and I'm actually going to clean up a little bit of this flux even though it is no clean flux. Just gonna put some isopropyl alcohol down, clean it up just a little bit. I'm just gonna quickly wipe down all of the gold pads for the buttons just in case any flux traveled over those. And inspecting the board real quick, everything looks peachy keen. So. There is one more thing that we have to do to prepare this board real quick. We're gonna flip this over and over by the power switch, we're actually gonna remove this fuse. I'm assuming and honestly hoping that there's a fuse on the board we just put on top of the screen because they want us to remove this one. So I'm gonna put a bit of flux down over the fuse. I believe there's only one fuse here. And once our soldering iron is back up to temp, we can actually flood the fuse with some solder Get it on both sides there and then we can take our tweezers and just push it and just push it off maybe i don't know if i got the best shot of that but yeah that's how simple it is oh it's still still stuck to my soldering iron and while we're over here i'm actually going to add a bit of solder to both the battery connectors and the farthest point of the fuse the right side of the fuse to be a little more specific we're just going to add some solder to here and to here and we're going to solder a wire to each of those spots. OK, and now I'm going to turn off the soldering iron for a bit because we're going to save the last bit of soldering for the end. From here, if you want to keep the touch pads, you're welcome to. For the sake of instruction, I am going to install these. But since we're doing the soldering anyways, I don't see much of a need to install the touch pads. One's going to be for brightness. One's going to be for color palette swapping. And I'm going to install this one here underneath where the screen connector will be. Hold that wire over. And I'm going to stick this one down over here in this open area down below and put the wire out of the way. But from here, I think everything is technically locked down. So we can take our motherboard and we can put it down over the top like this. Make sure your speaker goes in its hole correctly. You might have to lift this up a bit, but we can hold this and we can put our three Phillips screws down, not the black Phillips screw, the gold or silver ones, depending on which shell you're using. And they go in the same spots as earlier. So now we get to plug in a bunch of ribbon cables. We're going to start with the big screen one. We can fold this over and slot it in like so. Only a little bit of the gold pins will be showing. And then we can go ahead and lock those two tabs down so they're flush like that. My ribbon cable seems to be a little bit long, so I'm just going to shove a bit of it back down in there. Now we have to connect these two ribbon cables, and it looks like it's going to be a little annoying since we already have our motherboard smashed on top of it. I'm going to move my wires out of the way real quick to make my life a little easier. This side doesn't look so bad because we have a little bit of extra room. So we'll start over here. We can lift this connector up and then we just need to slot this ribbon cable in like so. Hopefully this is somewhat easy to see. It's going to look something like that and then we can lock that connector down. Remember these connectors open up like a book and close like a book. Over here, we're gonna have to do the same thing, but with less room to work with. So 
I'm gonna just push that ribbon cable back for a second, lift up that piece there, and then we're gonna try somehow to just slot this in. Man, this is tough. Maybe this will be easier if you unscrew the motherboard, but I think it's gonna be tough to do it no matter what, since this is soldered down to the board. Oh, there we go. And making sure it's nice and aligned up, we're gonna lock that down, and they should look something like this. Now we can solder these last three wires down. Turning our soldering irons back on, ignore the five volt pad here. My first thought was to solder the positive battery terminal wire to there, but no, we're gonna solder that to battery plus. Either way, I'm gonna put some flux down on those three pads there and add some solder. Try not to melt the shell since we're right next to it, but it's not the end of the world if you melt it a little bit. I've done that a time or two. And make sure you have the correct wire and I've got the positive battery wire, so I'm gonna solder that down to bat plus, just like that. I'm gonna take the one that we soldered to the fuse and solder that down to F underscore zero or O. I don't know what that is. And then I'm gonna take our last wire, the negative wire, and solder that to ground, which is GND. And we're done. Simple as that. I'm just gonna shove all of those wires underneath the motherboard there, get it out of the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put in our side pieces. The one with the notch is gonna be over on the right side, and then L and R can go in like that. And we can put our power switch in, take our back half of the shell, take off our battery cover, slot this down in there, and we can take our black Phillips screw and put it down here. Depending on what shell you use, you might have a smaller tri-wing screw in your new bag of screws. That one will go down here as well, but for me, it is the black Phillips head, and I'm gonna screw that down. I'm not gonna do it too tight because of the whole tolerance thing, but I'm going to keep my hand with a little bit of pressure on top of the whole thing. So I switch over to my tri-wing screwdriver, at least changing the bit, and then I'm going to put both the tri-wing screws up in the two top parts, and I'm just going to keep pressure as I put screws down the rest of the shell in those six holes that we took them out of at the very beginning. I feel like it's pretty obvious which six holes I'm talking about, but hey, if you're in the extended cut watching, I may just have this part uncut, or at least I'm talking enough to the point where there's not much cutting needed. So you're welcome. The last one goes over here. And then I'm just gonna go around and make sure that all of these are tightened now that we've got all of the screws in their place. I'm gonna swap back over to the Phillips bit just to see if we can make this maybe a little bit tighter. Yeah, there's just gonna be a bit of a gap over here unless I decide to go back in and sand it down anymore. Because the only reason I'm gonna open this back up is if there is something wrong with this. And I don't think there's actually anything wrong with this. But we'll see. Okay, let's at least put in the batteries and test everything with my test cart. And don't do this to me. Okay, scared me a bit there. Having a little bit of humming going on. Right on my D-pad is not working, so I will have to go back in. But turn on FR. Oh, whoa, they updated it so you can turn off the touchpads? That is legendary. Thank you, High Speed Edo. And then there are, holy, I can't even see it. Once it gets to three, I can't even see the screen. But there are 15 levels of brightness. Wow, I might need to look at V5 screens again, maybe do a re-review. You got all the color modes. Hopefully my Game Boy is making noise only because it's dying. I think that might be the case. But you turn that brightness down, anything below three and below is literally just off. Either in a pitch black room, you cannot even see it at brightness level three. So that's a little odd. I guess it technically works as a sleep mode <laughs> in a way. But yeah, that's interesting. I will throw it to future me for any potential fixes we need to make or to just mess around with the docking stuff. Round three, let's try this again. All right, I've decided to put on Super Monkey Ball Jr. because why not? It's been many months, and as you just heard, I've tried to do the second channel version a couple of times now. Hopefully everything's working this time because I'm not doing it again. We are docked in from here. 
Just drop it on the dock and boom. Pretty seamless. You can play this without batteries if you want to, but you just can't take it out of the dock or else, you know, the whole thing shuts off. We've got a nunchuck port over on the left side. There's a Super Nintendo port on the right side. We've got micro HDMI and USB-C for power. There's enough space for a full-size HDMI. They didn't want to do that for some reason. Not even a mini, you know, micro, the smallest one. Pretty sure that's micro. The dock itself is totally fine. It could have even been a little bit bigger if there actually wasn't enough space for full HDMI. There's also no USB port, which I was kind of saddened by. There's enough space next to the nunchuck port. You could have a USB and then, oh, look at that. You could also have this 8-bit dough USB thing and or just any USB controller or whatever. A Bluetooth controller adapter like the 8-bit dough one that I just got out. Anyways. It just, you know, that the dock's the dock. It's fine. It's got plenty of stuff. It works. My biggest problem with this entire mod, let's uh, try and show this off. So I'm going to mute that. And we are turning up the speaker on the Game Boy all the way. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. It's out of sync. It drives me crazy enough because it's almost a full two second delay. That's crazy that I would rather just have the Game Boy Advance speaker playing because that is in sync. And I have no idea why it's so out of sync. At first I thought it was exponential, but yeah, it's just two full seconds. It's bad. But playing the game is fine. The The game, as far as I know, does not have any delays, just the sound. So it's so playable, it's just annoying. And if you're like playing Mario or something and you're jump, 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 jumping around, you're just gonna hear those jumps whenever. They're not gonna be synced to Mario's jump unless you're jumping in sync with the delayed audio. And then when you stop jumping in that, it'll just have an extra jump sound at the end. It's just all... <sighs> God, it's it's so annoying. It's unbearable. If you do have uh, one of these controllers plugged in or just a nunchuck port controller plugged in at the same time as a Super Nintendo port, they will control both. Like at the same time, they will both go. One person could be D-pad, the other person could be A and B. It, it'll work. A little fun party game, I guess. But what I want to try is something ridiculously stupid. We've got a stick that could be a D-pad and... Two buttons that could be A and B, but you just don't have L or R or star to select. No, but it doesn't. It doesn't work. Unfortunate. But I'm going to sit here and play a game of Super Monkey Ball Jr. We'll just play beginner because it's kind of hard. I'm a baby. I mean, I, I'm a baby main. I like, wait, well, this is different. It's been a while since I've played Super Monkey Ball Jr. I thought it was just going to be the first GameCube game, but it's not. That was different. I mean, this is the similar. I just fell through the floor. I, okay. I don't know if I've ever actually played through Super Monkey Ball Jr. It's honestly kind of hard. This is not the best, like, looking game. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing Oh, game over? There's no continues? Really? Okay. Oh, there. Oh, why you bait me like that? Game over screen doesn't happen until the end, bud. There is a lot of forward momentum in this game. It also just like kind of feels laggy, it, but that's the game, not the mod or the system. I mean, they're doing a 3D game on a 2D console, so it's pretty good. Oh, um, I don't know if I can do this one. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, dude, there's so much forward momentum. Oh, dude. Oh, no way. Oh, my gosh. I think I lucked out completely there. I don't know if I was beating that level. Oh my, I don't know if I'm beating this level. There's no walls. I like how they still have the shine from the sun. There's no wall to stop me. Okay. Can I beat the final level? I don't know. I don't think I could. Expert on this has got to be horrible. What? Okay. I'm too concentrated to say anything. And that's exactly why I don't have a gaming channel. I would love to just be like a game streamer. Or something.
Oh yeah, sick jump, sick shortcut for the win. Just because I don't think I would have had enough time to make that loop. So cool. And uh, just in case you're wondering, this is 720p and it is a perfect three by two, two by three, whatever the actual Game Boy Advance screen is. It's it's good. It's a good ratio. As far as I'm aware, there is no. Oh oh, there is different aspect ratios. Okay, you can stretch it to 16 by nine, and then you can fill the screen okay well that's good to know and you can still keep the touch sensors off when we're on the big screen okay i didn't know this good thing i've already done my script <laughs> i guess that's a good way to end this one i don't think there's anything else i need to do peace